So one of my viewers wrote in and left a comment and asked if it would be possible to uh, show some of the details of the plane and do a walk around. So today I'd like to do that for you and, uh, and show you uh, some of the unique features of the Columbia 350. The plane's based in Watsonville, California. Um, I've been flying this airplane. I've been an owner of this plane for about five years now. It's, uh, again, it's uh, a Columbia 350, 2003. It's uh, considered a technically advanced aircraft, a TAA, so to speak. When I first got involved in this plane, I, I trained with a, a an instructor that had a TAA rating, a technically advanced aircraft rating. And that's because of the flight characteristics and the speed of this airplane. It took a little bit of getting used to. I was flying a Mooney before that, um, and I was able to adapt to this fairly quickly. The question I get asked uh, mostly about the plane is how fast and how far, and how much does it cost? <laughs> uh, in terms of cost, the Lance Air, uh, when it came out in 2004, it was certified in, uh, I think, uh, the fall of 2003. And when it first came out, it had a suggested retail price, I believe, around $379,000. Nowadays, you can find a Columbia 350 in very good condition for uh, around just over $200,000. How fast? The uh, true airspeed of the plane is about 165. 165 knots. True air speed is uh, the, the speed that's been adjusted for temperature and pressure. DB. Burns about 12 and a half gallons uh, per hour uh, when it's, uh, I fly lean of peak. So uh, when I lean the mixture, I, I do lean of peak and that results in about 12 and a half gallons of fuel burn per hour at about 65% of the uh, power setting of the airplane. The plane has a kind of an interesting history. It was designed by Lance Niebauer. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Lance is very famous in the aviation world for Lance Air. When Lance was uh, designing and developing airplanes at that time, the LC-40, which became the Columbia 300, he started a company called Columbia, and the Lance Air LC-40 became the Columbia 300. That was the 300, then became the 350, which was then the first FAA certified airplane by Lance Air as Columbia at that time. Interesting that the design and aerodynamics of that plane actually came from a research program that was developed by NASA called AGIT. That was the Advanced General Aviation Transport experiment and that was a program that was put into place to help general aviation the sales were slow at that time and and i guess there was probably some federal money that was uh directed towards nasa so they could develop some aerodynamics that was also how Dira's sr-20 and the sr-22 was developed at the same time using the some of the aerodynamics that were developed from the nasa agate program this is an all composite uh, fiberglass airplane with carbon uh, impregnated uh, spars in the wings. It's a utility rated airplane uh, which allows the plane to do some limited acrobatic maneuvers. There's a general aviation category, there's utility, and there's an acrobatic designated by the FAA. This again is a utility, has a utility rating. Today I'd like to walk around the plane and point out some of the features. There's some really nice uh, engineering and uh, hardware that uh, doesn't uh, that you typically don't see, and we'll get the camera up close and you can see some of this stuff. Before we get into that, uh, just one last bit on useful load. Okay, like I said, how much, how fast, and how many people? Well, it's got four seats, so four people. Uh, it actually has a useful load of 1,100 pounds. The useful load is the difference between the maximum takeoff weight and the empty weight. The maximum takeoff weight is 3,400 pounds. The empty weight is 2,300 pounds. The difference between those two numbers is 1,100 pounds. That's, again, the useful maximum useful load. And the maximum useful load now can be divided into passengers, fuel, and cargo. 
And that's, that's what you have to work with as the pilot. You have to use weight and balance to determine that. But in a nutshell, uh, the plane has two tanks, two fuel tanks, and it has a maximum fuel capacity of, a maximum usable fuel capacity of 98 gallons. Fuel weighs about six pounds per gallon, so that's uh, 100 gallons times six is about 600 pounds. So 1,100 pounds less the fuel gives you a workable weight of 500 pounds. That means for people in luggage, and you've got full fuel tanks, you've got about 500 pounds. If you want to put more people or luggage, you need to trade off and reduce the amount of fuel. The plane has a stall speed of 57 knots, a maneuvering speed of about 148 knots, and then a V knot to exceed speed of 234 knots. Okay, so let's walk around the plane and I'll point out some of the features. Up front, we've got a uh, Continental IO550 N25. It's a 310 horsepower flat six, horizontal flat six uh, engine, similar to a Porsche engine, actually. Uh, it's air-cooled. You can see the air vents here in the front. And it has a TBO, which is time before overhaul of 2,000 hours. On the front, we've got a three-bladed heart cell propeller. It's a constant speed propeller with a Macaulay governor uh, that controls the uh, speed of the propeller. You've probably seen me in some of the, my other videos uh, where I changed the RPMs of the propeller. That's the blue knob in the cockpit. That controls the governor, which then controls the speed of the propeller. Here's some photographs of the engine with the cowlings removed uh, during a recent oil change so you can see what the engine looks like. Let's talk about the wing for a minute. The wings are 36 feet long. Uh, they've got the tiny little winglets on the side, on the tips here, next to the navigation lights. These are fiberglass wings with a epoxy laminated honeycomb core. And then a carbon, and then three carbon fiber spars that run the length of the wing. Um, I was told that during the FAA certification process, they couldn't break the spars during the testing, according to one of my instructors many years ago. One of the questions I get a lot is, "What happened here? It looks like they ran out of material or something." This is an intentional part of the design of, of the wing, and what that does is it moves the stall. To the, to the what's called the root of the wing. The root is the intersection of the wing, and by moving the stall in towards the fuselage, it makes the stall characteristics of the plane much more benign and easier to control. So that's the purpose of, of this, this cutout here, is to move the stall in towards the front of the wing. Here's the, uh, the cap for the fuel. As you can see, it's flush with the wing to improve the airflow and eliminate any frictional surface here that would uh, reduce performance. Here you have the uh, speed brakes. Here we've got the air intake for the cockpit. This is the where the air is drawn in. Coming around the, the other side here, um, landing light, taxi light, and then this is the, the stall indicator here on the my finger. During my pre-flight, this is one of the, uh, in any airplane you always check to make sure that the stall indicator is functioning properly. Let's walk around here. I want to show you some stuff underneath the wing that's kind of interesting that you don't normally see. Uh, before we go down there though, I want to show you this uh, servo control rod here that uh, actuates in this manner. And what this does is it reduces pressure on the stick inside the cockpit so that it reduces a little fatigue in the while flying the airplane. The plane uh, is on a push rod system. There's no pulleys or cables in this system. So it tends to be a little bit stiff and this helps relieve some of the pressure. So first I'd like to point out this little inspection window and you can see this can be used to verify that the operation and the integrity of this, this hinge is, is intact. Anyway, I thought, just thought that was a nice feature. And then you can see the hardware here for the servo control tab and uh, you can see it actuate here. Okay, back up to the top of the wing. You see these little black strings that are 
coming off the wing. These are called uh, static wicks, and what this does is if the airplane were in a environment where electricity were to build up on the plane, this would dissipate the electricity or the electrons into the atmosphere so that the airplane uh, remains in a stable and safe configuration without a, a charge. Uh, coming over to the uh, to the rear of the plane, this is the uh, cargo door. And I'll just pop this open here real quick so you can see inside. The way this works, it's kind of clever. There's two locks, one here, and then this, this lock here doesn't allow you to remove the key. It just is a reminder so that you, you properly lock the ca cargo door uh, after loading. As you can see inside here, we've got a, a main cargo storage area that's limited to 100 pounds and then what's called a hat rack here in the back, which is limited to 25 pounds. All subject to weight and balance considerations, of course. So I'll close this, close this, and we're ready to fly. Uh, a little bit later, you'll see the enunciators on the front of the cockpit. If this wasn't, if this door wasn't closed properly, there would be an enunciation on the cockpit indicating the door wasn't closed properly. Let's move around the back of the plane. The rudder is about nine feet tall, and again, it's all fiberglass, as is the horizontal horizontal stabilizer. I don't know if you can see underneath here. Here's a counterweight that helps compensate during flight and help, just helps uh, ease the amount of effort that's used in controlling the surface of the plane. Here's a trim tab on the rudder, another trim tab here that's used by the autopilot to set altitude, more static wicks. Coming around to this side, this is the static port for the pitot static system. As you can see, there's a little tiny hole here that helps equalize the pressure in the system so that it reads properly. Part of the pre-flight checks to make sure that the, the, this hole is clear. This is a standard thing for all the airplanes. It's something I always check. Um, down below, you see the two communication antennas. A little bit of oil on them. That's pretty normal. Over here, we've got a tie down. And then uh, up on the top of the rudder, you've got the two VOR antennas. The wings are 36 feet from tip to tip. They have uh, faller flaps. These are very common uh, flaps that are used in many, many airplane designs. Right now, the flaps are in the takeoff position. The takeoff position is 12 degrees off the, the wing. Um, the flaps can be deployed at 120 knots or less in the takeoff position, and then they can be brought down to the full flap landing position, which is 40 degrees at 119 knots.